go at gluing on the um, carpet, the rear carpet here before we install the back seats. Um, but before doing that, you need to take off these side trim pieces here. And in order to take off the side trim pieces, you'll find a number of screws. There should be one down there in the corner. You might find other screws here along the side and here at the top. And um, you also need to take off this piece of chrome here. And that's just held on quite simply by these two screws here. And there's also one bolt just in there that needs to come out as well. You remove the soft top hood release handle this one here and the first thing you need to do is take off this trim piece here and that trim piece is the only thing that's actually holding that on there are no screws but what a lot of people do is they try and wedge a screwdriver under there and end up breaking the thing so we're going to have to glue that back together but it's actually just held on by that one little clip and as soon as you free that clip this here will just oops sorry will just slide off It'll slide off once you do that. So undo the clip first, and then that just slides off. When you do um, take your soft top release handle off, make a note of where the parts go. So for example, this part here was actually back to front on this car originally, so someone's obviously put it on not correct. So this handle should be at the top, this handle should be at the side. When you're taking that bolt out is that it has a spring washer on it try and take that out with the bolt because invariably it ends up falling down there it's very difficult to retrieve you take these trim pieces out they pull towards you they're still held in by this lip here so you have to sort of pull them towards you this way to get them out it's quite tricky but they should just come away revealing the seat belt mechanism and the hole down there which we're going to use for putting the um rear seat very belt. lucky that fitting there, to get a big Phillips screwdriver, will just screw straight out. Which, uh, we're not going to be very lucky on this one. It's completely chewed up and it ain't coming out. So sometimes you have to drill those out. Um, sometimes you're lucky and they just screw straight out. Sometimes you can also get a set of mole grips or set of pliers on here and twist it out that way as well. Carpet trim here. I've just put a bit of an old glove over the um, fitting there so we don't get any glue on that. Um, next up, I've just got to cut a very small hole out of the carpet, new piece of carpet, just to accommodate that catch. Then we're going to spray it with some Trim Fix 120. We'll spray the carpet on one side, and then we're going to spray the back of that, and then we're going to push the two together. And use a couple of clamps along the top here just to clamp it on when it dries. A bit of trim to stick down is this piece here after you've taken the chair out. A few bits of wood to wear it down and that will be ready in a few minutes. A piece of carpet to go on is this piece that goes along here. And the only thing you have to um, be careful of when you've got the seat out is to, is to make sure that you don't glue it so low down that um, you can't get the seat back in. So what I've used as my guide is actually this little piece of um, metal here which holds the seat in and taking the carpet down as far as I can against that piece of metal. So I'm going to take that out now just to make sure I don't accidentally glue it to the metal. The next bit to do is along the footwell there. And then after you've done that bit, the next bit to do is the driver's side here. And then last thing we're going to do tonight is the passenger side, which overlaps here which is why you've got to do the driver's side first. Glue as much as you can just cover any bits of new carpet you've just laid or anything that you don't want to get um, covered in glue and then just get spraying. We received this centre section back in the post today and when they originally sent it to us what they had done is they had put the clip on the back here instead of on the front and we sent it back to them and in actual fact they've just sent us the same piece back and you can tell if you feel through here you can still feel the old rivets rather than actually making up a new piece and doing it properly they've just cut that off and stuck it on the front you can still feel the old rivets through here and it's just really poor 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 quality workmanship they should have just made up a new piece so we got this interior from a company called 
I think SJS car styling based in um, Berlin and to be honest there has been no end of problems with this company the first problem we encountered was when we were trying to fit this here there's a couple of hinges down at the bottom for this section and the holes were drilled in completely the wrong places so the hinges didn't line up in the end we had to take the hinges off the old um, piece out and refit into here which was a bit of a pain then they sent us that piece that was clip was on the wrong side when we actually emailed them and said you know you've sent the piece with the clip on the wrong side i then got an email back from somebody saying it fits perfectly just turn it round obviously you can see that that's not a symmetrical piece you can't just turn it round but anyway they did eventually send us another piece the um seat covers don't fit apparently <laughs> they've sent us left hand drive carpets for a right hand drive car apparently they don't do right hand drive carpets despite the fact that when we ordered it we mentioned we had a right hand drive car so we're going to have to modify those this bit here that they've sent us is an absolute pig to put on um, it's just just not cut to the right sizes the carpet is really poor quality carpets and half the time we just have to make adjustments so SJS car styling in Berlin definitely not a company I'd recommend Today we're going to just try fitting together this back section now and we'll probably have to take those bolts out and put that section in first and then put the sides back in. When you come to put the back end of the car back together you've got to take the back seats out because these two panels won't slot up underneath if the back seats are in so they go in at an angle like that and then they're going to clip underneath the lip just here and then they're going to be screwed in. Once you've got these side bits in using this you can then put this in and the only thing you have to be aware of there is some adjustment in the hinges just make sure it's not too high or too low because that is actually it's supposed to fold down and there's a little catch that I haven't attached here yet that clips into the top of that so you can have a flat bench seat if so desired um, so the order of things is after you've put the sides in you then clip that piece in then you put that on top and then these just both squeeze in or slot in there that you can attach these chrome pieces they're just held in by two screws here and one bolt through there and they should that bolt through there should have a washer spring washer on it we, we trimming the boot today or we carpeting the boot and the panel that goes here is this panel down here and it's another example of poor fitment from this particular company I'm having to trim out bits of carpet to actually get that to fit I mean this is the bit of carpet that came off and you can see it's a completely different size so we're going to be having to cut that down to size to exactly the same size as the other one we've masked off the hinges on here a little bit of masking on the back make our life easier when it comes to cleaning off excess glue it's time to start so spraying example of poor fitment this is the carpet that came out of the car you'd expect the which fitted perfectly and you expect the bit that they sent you to actually be somewhere close but you can see that that's just not even close around that edge there. Okay, we're going to try and cut the trim piece that fits on the horseshoe lid. And it's quite difficult because the piece they this is the piece that came off the car, and this is the piece they send you, and it's basically nothing like the piece that came off the car. So once again, I've drawn around it, and I'm going to cut it. I've measured three times I'm gonna hopefully just cut once um, gluing this piece of trim is going to definitely be the hardest thing what we've done first is we've trimmed off a little bit of foam that thick off this piece here so we just cut about a couple of centimeters of foam off and then we've glued the vinyl to the metal strip just along here just on this face to start off with the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to glue the bottom of this metal strip to the foam and then we're going to clamp that down like that we're going to continue trying to fit this piece of the trim here yesterday we glued that bit of vinyl onto the top of the metal strip and the bottom of the metal strip we just glued some foam that bit of foam strip running all the way along next up we're going to try and glue these bits of foam to the top of these plastic bits here which fit here 
So I'm just going to glue the foam on first. And once that's done, we're going to see about pulling the vinyl round and sticking it to the underside of here to hopefully keep the whole thing in place. Okay, next up I'm going to put some glue just around the edge of here, just on the top of here, basically just following the pattern of glue that was there before. And then I'm just going to start off by sticking the foam in place. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I've just pegged this loosely, is just stick this vinyl onto the plastic. Well, at least I'm going to try and do that. And that's going to be the trickiest bit of all. I don't want to get glue on. I'm just going to glue this strip onto the inside of here. Glue is on. Now we've got to remove the masking tape and make sure we stick it in the right place. We're only going to get one chance. That's stuck down there it's pretty much instantaneous once you press this down just fitting that on just to make sure that it does fit in all the holes etc be really difficult getting rid of all the creases up here and i have no doubt that there'll be professionals out there thinking what are you doing you don't do it that way however i've never done it before so i've just got to try and work it out for myself okay next we're going to stick the end bit on then we're going to move to the other side the hardest bit of this car to trim it's proven to be this horseshoe here and I think in order to do it I'm going to have to take it off um, so I'm going to attempt to do that now without scratching all the paint. It's proving really difficult to trim this bit. I've redone it to the best I can and it's slightly better than it was but still not perfect, still not as smooth as I'd like it and getting this here to trim around there it's really difficult. The way I've done it on this side is just to use a hairdryer, a little Dyson hairdryer, to stretch the vinyl over. Um, so you can basically stretch it around this corner with just one small join there. Now that'll be covered by the chrome trim. It's actually this piece here that has to be without any creases or marks. So we're now going to get a hairdryer on this piece and see if we can do the same again. Well, now I've got to take the masking tape off first before you start sticking down. Now it's just a matter of bending that vinyl over, stretching it hopefully without too many creases. Once you've stuck on the vinyl to the best or the leather to the best of your ability, don't forget to bend down these tabs here. And on the plastic bits on the other side, there are star clips, which you've got to click over here. They're actually at the garage, so we're going to go down there now and refit this. Trimming this car now. This horseshoe section here was incredibly difficult to do and I didn't do an amazing job on it, but it is quite difficult and I've got it as good as I can get it. It's not perfect, but um, well, we saved ourselves a thousand pounds basically. It was the quote we got to trim this car. I've still got to do the front carpets, which are sent for left-hand drive cars, so somehow we're going to have to adapt those. But the next job is to get the wheels refurbished on this car. We're just going to take them off and get them diamond cut and repainted and to bring them back to life. And then I think the last thing to do will be the exhaust pipe on this car. We're going to take the exhaust off there. You can see it's quite rusty and we're going to sand it back and paint it with special exhaust paint. And then that's the car pretty much done apart from the hard roof, which I'll do as a separate issue, I think. 